Alrighty, so I'm gonna kind of go over probably, probably my favorite talk from this last general conference. And it was Elder Carl D. Hurst's talk entitled God's Favorite. Um, he talks about how John, um, the revelator, the one who, one of the original 12 apostles, would in his gospel write that he write himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved or his like God Christ's beloved and um Elder Hurst mentions and makes a comment saying that's probably not as a unique title as we might or originally think because God loves each of us equally or not one isn't more of God's favorite than another and um and so in a way we can all have that same sort of relationship in having that feeling that we are his beloved son we are his beloved daughter for the sisters and it makes me start to wonder where is my relationship with Christ and how much of an understanding do I have of his love for me and this kind of goes into a little bit with what Nephi would say where he would talk about Christ as being my Jesus do we have that same sort of relationship with him have we felt his love in such great abundance that we can say that he is my Jesus it's not always easy sometimes to feel his love I know that firsthand there are many times in my life, especially in difficulties and trials and um, my hardships where I might have done something that I shouldn't have done, where I kind of feel stupid and feel really ashamed of what it is that I was doing. I can sometimes feel and think, why would God ever love me for this? And in those moments, because I try to remember that Heavenly Father always wants to hear from me. He always is mindful and he's already knows everything that I've done. And, um, and so for me, if I come to him and vulnerably tell him how I'm feeling, vulnerably tell him what I did without sparing detail sometimes, and asking him to forgive me, asking him, do you still love me? Those are times for me personally that I have felt Jesus Christ's love in such great abundance. And it helps me to remember, especially in moments when I get back into those situations, because I'm not perfect, I'm always going to make mistakes, I will remember and reflect on the times that I felt his love when I've reached out to him in those moments. And it gives me the encouragement to go back to him and tell him again, hey, look, I messed up in the same thing that I did last time. Um, and every time I can feel him saying, you know, I'm, I know you're struggling and I'm glad you're coming to me trying to find help, trying to find healing, trying to find strength. And there are times where he'll even show me his love by telling me a joke. <laughs> um, he, we have a fun relationship in that way, but it's, it's really nice knowing that I can go to him whenever and I can ask him whenever, whether I'm just having a bad day and even when things are going really well, I can ask him, Heavenly Father, do you love me? Not as a way of tempting, not as a way of coaxing him into doing something that he otherwise wouldn't want to do or agree with, but he always wants us to know that he, that he loves us. That is something that he will always answer. And there are many times where I've needed to kind of get away from the world away from all my distractions and I'll go out into nature and I'll find ways to kind of think about him. And 
Elder Hurst mentions, like, we can do some of those things where we can go and look at God's creation, especially in a wider, broader view, where we take a step back from everything and just look with an eternal, celestial way of thinking. Do we see the beauty in God's creation that he gave, at, gave us because he loves us? Do you feel his love when you listen to wholesome music that lacks profanity and lacks vulgarity? Profanity and vulgarity can rob us from the spirit, which makes it harder for us to feel God's love for us. We can do it through service and sharing our love with others. If we think about how much we love other people and what we can do to help them feel our love and God's love, we are magnified in feeling God's love as well. I want you to kind of think about in your life, what moments have you felt God's love in your life? Is there something that you can start doing now if you don't feel his love? Are you feeling alone? Are you feeling discouraged, depressed, anxious, unsure about who you are? Where you might want to know if someone truly deeply cares and loves you. I want you to go to Heavenly Father and ask him if he loves you. And I want you to be mindful of the things that you start to recognize that are good in your life. And think about and be mindful of the feelings that you have. What thoughts come into your mind? I can promise you, the Spirit will come into your life if you are seeking to know if Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father love you perfectly. You will come to understand what that means as you are pursuing this course. I don't know perfectly what it means for them to love me, but my understanding of their love has grown greatly over the years. And I can say this, you are his favorite child. I'm his favorite child. Everyone is his favorite child. He is my Jesus. He is my savior and he is my friend whom I love and I know who loves me and I know he loves you. And if you need some things to help you kind of have some hope in that, lean on my testimony of that and you can then gain a witness for yourself if you will act on that hope act on that faith I want you to feel his love because it will help you to overcome a lot of the challenges in your life it might not take away your anxiety it might not take away the depression or your discouragement not fully at least but it can give you that strength and that encouragement to go forward, even though it might not seem very encouraging to want to go forward. But when you know that he loves you, I can promise you, you will know that all things work together for your good. And I know that great things are in store for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.